So again, welcome to the Ultra Course Conversion Workshop. And my name is Megan Holt, and there's actually going to be two of us who will be hosting this for you today. So I would like to present Michael Strunk. He's an instructional support specialist in the faculty development department at NIU. And of course, as I said, my name is Megan Holt. I also work in the faculty development department. I'm an instructional support coordinator here at NIU. So if you have any questions about Blackboard, teaching, um, any type of online tool, please feel free to give us a call or send us an email. We'll be happy to respond. So I just wanted to go over our agenda today. As many of you have heard, Blackboard is starting to change, and they're now releasing a new form of Blackboard called Blackboard Ultra. So this is a very gradual progression. I wanted to remind you that you are actually kind of at the start of this brand new conversion process. You are ahead of the curve. This is going to be something that happens over time. So I don't want you to feel like you have to jump in right now. Um, this is something that you can plan and think about. So to start with today, what we're going to talk about is the ultra overview, why this change has come about, what it means. We're going to look at some specific feature changes, what you can expect. And we also have a guide which will give us, you know, a little bit more information, you know, about these specific aspects that are going to change. And then for the latter half of this session, it uh, should only take about an hour for the whole session, Mike is going to step in and he's going to guide you through the actual conversion process. So it may not be as simple as you might expect, but we're here to guide you through it and we're going to help you make some you know, deliberate informed decisions. He's going to talk to you about the exceptions to this conversion process. Okay. So what happens if things don't transfer over as smoothly as you expected? And then we also have kind of some tips that we think would help you through the conversion process, some best practices. So with that in mind, I would like to go ahead and talk to you about Ultra. So if you have a chance, why don't you go ahead and maybe type into the uh, chat bar, have any of you looked at the Blackboard Ultra? Have any of you started a class or seen it in action? Just let me know what you think. All right, I see somebody typing. Anybody else? Okay, so Nick asked, doesn't the new web courses at niu.edu point directly to Ultra already? Um, partially. So we've already started with the switch. Uh, NIU made a decision to switch you to the Blackboard Ultra base navigation. But for those of you who are teaching out of Blackboard, um, if your classroom looks the same as always, then you're probably teaching out of the original version. So I see some typing going on, but while that's taking place, I just wanted to let you know that the Ultra experience is supposed to be more modern, intuitive, and personalized. Yes, just the navigation bar so far has changed for, for faculty unless they decided that they wanted to teach out of the Ultra classroom. Uh, Blackboard is... I could just jump in here for a second, I think, um, just to clear things up. Um, what we've done is when we did the conversion, we uh, basically converted everyone to the base navigation page. So everyone hits that same page when they log on. Um, but from there, as far as your course view goes, then that's your choice. So instructors then can choose whether they want to stay in original or move to the ultra course view. I hope that clears things up a little bit. And sorry for interrupting. No, I, I appreciate the interruptions. Thanks, Mike. Um, so Blackboard, the original experience, which I anticipate most of you are still using at this time, is um, actually 10 years old. We're now in 2020, so I, I think I can effectively say it is 10 years old. So um, 
in technology terms, Blackboard is uh, ancient. It should be a, a relic that is in a museum. Uh, so now they've decided that they want to go ahead and change it and make it more modern, intuitive, and, and personalized, as we said before. One of the specific goals of this is we want Blackboard to be um, accessible on mobile devices so that students don't just have to use mobile apps if they want to access their course material from their cell phone or their tablet. So the flip side to this is that we have instructors who have been teaching out of Blackboard for many years. So there is a lot of material that they've built up. They've really honed their classrooms. So Blackboard is cognizant of this, and they want to make the transition a gradual process. You know, they want everyone to be on board and to convert um, at the time that they feel is appropriate. So some of the things that you can expect with the Ultra Classrooms, which, and I promise we have some slides to show you on what it actually looks like, and then Mike will walk you through the conversion so you can actually get in there and, and you know, play around yourself, um, is that the activity stream, which you may have noticed in the uh, base navigation page, now is customizable. So what you see will be different than what your students see. Okay, there also are going to be things that are just customized specifically to you. You're going to see notifications about your particular classes. Somebody else who's teaching a different course load will see notifications that is customized just to them. And let's see. So some of the changes that you may have already noticed, because we said yes, we, we switched you over to the ultra base navigation. Again, you have that activity stream. Um, it consolidates activity from all of your courses. If you are teaching four classes, then you're going to see in the activity stream some notifications for each of those four classes. There's going to be a calendar which displays the schedule and due dates for all of your courses. But again, if you've played with this feature, then you realize you can just scale back and you can look at it from a course by course basis. If it's too much of an overload, then you can just, you know, go back and look at it from one class at a time. The grades tab now allows you to jump into grading with one click. And this goes back to making things more accessible from a mobile application. Before, you would have to open your course, go to the grade book, and then you would have to begin your grading. This allows you, once you get a notification that something has been submitted, you can click on it and grade it immediately. And this is something that we're going to come back and visit a little bit later, but now we have two levels of nesting. And I don't know if uh, anybody's heard about this, but basically what we're trying to do with Blackboard Ultra is we want to make everything accessible and easy to find. So in a sense, they've flattened it out. And that means that you can have a learning module, maybe all of your week one activities. And then there might be a folder. And that folder could be reading material. And in that folder, there's going to be another folder. So, but we don't have this unlimited capacity in Ultra for folders within folders within folders. And this has been a deliberate decision. And this is just making, again, the material easier for students to locate. Right. So I wanted to show you this screen right here. The Ultra Base Navigation, hopefully this looks familiar to you. Um, this is the part that we've already changed for you, or NAU has changed for you. So this should make everything um, easier to find, accessible. And then I have pictures here of the two types of classrooms. The original view is the picture in the middle, right? It has the menu and all the different links that you can click on versus the ultra course view, which is what you'll be able to convert to today. Um, again, it's more open, um, fewer links, less menus. Um, the idea here is we want you to be able to find your course material with fewer clicks, is basically the idea behind the ultra course concept. So OK, those are some of the changes that have happened now with you know, the base navigation um, menu and your notifications about your courses. So there have also been some big changes with ultra inside the course, and I promise not teasing you. Uh, Mike is going to walk you through this so that you can actually play with this yourself. But 
Um, one of the big changes is announcements are no longer going to be sent as an email. Um, they're going to actually pop up in a window as soon as the student enters the course. So I, I have freely acknowledged I was the student who never read my announcements. Um, this, I think, is because Blackboard has you know, been listening to feedback from instructors, and they realize that there's a lot of students who come in kind of with this single-minded track purpose, right? They walk into their class, they sign in, they want to see what's due. They want to check their grades. Um, but this, now you can schedule announcements in advance, and the second the student you know, enters their course, it'll see it, uh, they'll see it right in their face. That isn't to say that you don't have an email feature. Um, let's see, Nick, I see a question here that uh, just the left navigation has changed. Thus far, yes. Again, the classrooms, we don't want to push you into something um, that maybe you're not ready for. So the ultra experience, the classrooms, this part that I'm talking about right now, this is still ultimately up to you. You can make the transition as you see fit. Um, will the students get some notification that new announcements are on Blackboard? Yes. So announcements, um, they will see it in their activity stream. I say this with the caveat that students can elect to turn off notifications in their activity stream. So the student is still responsible for any, any announcement, um, any material that the instructor has issued. Um, but if they should set off those announcements, then they might not see it in their activity stream. Um, it also will pop up in an email to them, um, a daily notification email. So assuming they haven't turned off that notification, they'll see it there as well. Messages are now more contained within Blackboard. So messages, um, again, they're trying to come up with a system where messaging is connected just within the classroom. However, messages also have an option where you can send an email to your student. It will come up as an email that the student cannot respond to, um, but they will, if you choose that option, they will see the message in Blackboard and in their email. And the grade book has also changed, so it has a couple of different views depending on instructor preference. So the grade book, we have a list view or a grid view. Um, and I will show you examples of both of those. And again, I know we talked about it before, but I think it's worth revisiting. We have two levels of nesting. So you can have a learning module with a folder, or you can have a folder within a folder. Um, but other than that, they They've kind of established it so that you can't tuck folders within folders within folders within folders because the chances that a student will miss something is higher when you have all of these folders embedded within one another. So they've kind of flattened it out and, and they've limited not how many folders you can have, but how many folders you can place within a folder. So I do have a couple of images for you. So we'll go ahead and bring these up. This is an example of what the announcements pop-up will look like when somebody actually enters a course. And as you can see here, I'll get a little pointer going. The student will actually have to hit a dismiss button. So they can't claim that they never saw the announcement because until they uh, actually click the dismiss button, they can't get into their classroom. Um, another great feature about the announcements is that it will keep an archived record of any announcement that you send out throughout the class. So even if the student's in a rush and they quickly hit the dismiss button, they can always go back to re-review the announcement. Okay. So, and here we have a couple of examples of the different gradebook views. So this is um, actually the, the grid view, which I, I think is a little bit uh, similar towards the original view, right? You have all of your students on the left, and then at the top of the page, they show all of the assignments. Um, and as you can see, it highlights things that need to be graded. They're in purple, and they say, new submission, right? So this is one feature, um, and you'll notice here we put a little box 
around where you can toggle back and forth between the list view and the grid view. So if you want to see the list view, again, it really is just a, a big list of items that need to be graded. So kind of personal preference, the list view is really more about chronological order as things come in. You might see things um, highlighted that need to be graded. Yes, Nick, you will be able to sort and grade by a particular assignment, absolutely. You would just click on the column that you're interested in. All right, so the big question here is ultra right for you. We wanted to establish this idea that the ultra course conversion, it maybe isn't as simple of a process as you might expect. So as an instructor, you may have been teaching for a semester several semesters or even years and at this point you have a course that you really like you're you're pleased with the content and the structure and somebody says okay well ultra is now available um, it's not as simple as just clicking a couple of buttons and converting your existing material into the new layout so we just really wanted to establish that with you so that you aren't disappointed um, and we have like we said recommended workflows on on how you can convert without giving yourself a big headache. It's really where we're going with this. So is ultra right for you? So this is part of our web page here. You'll see niu.edu black, uh, backslash blackboard backslash ultra. And there's a couple of things here. The overview, it will discuss common features and their roles and now how they've adapted in the ultra view. So that's you know a great starting point. We already have some common questions that we've tried to answer in the overview. We also have a feature guide. And the feature guide is a case-by-case -case comparison, which I really like here. I tried to give you a smaller screenshot of it. Um, and what it will tell you is if it's available, if it's in research, if it's been discontinued, or if it's available with limitations. So instance, this course menu, I know it's a little small here, says discontinued, right? In the original view on the left side of your screen, you would have the control panel with the course menu and all these different links that you could click on. Oh, I see Dan has a question. I do. I, I just wanted to, to recommend if uh, uh, the attendees want to increase the size of the, of the slide, just put your cursor right smack in the middle of the screen. Uh, and then double click and it'll increase the size. Oh, thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Sure. So um, again, you might have some favorite features that you use within Blackboard. Um, and now you're nervous. We have Blackboard Ultra. Is it still going to be there? Is it going to operate the way that you expect? So this is a really great sheet because we've been able to tell you if it's available. Um, if it's in research, it means that the experts at Blackboard are looking into it. They're going to decide whether or not they're going to continue this feature um, in Blackboard Ultra. Discontinued, means they do not anticipate keeping it. And then available, but with limitations, pretty self-explanatory. Um, the feature is there, but it might not operate exactly the way um, that you, you expect. So I would like to kind of open this up to you, the participants. If you would go ahead and type in your chat box, um, are there any features that you absolutely love or even just rely on um, currently in your Blackboard classroom? All right, I see some typing going on here. All right. If I could jump in here, that's a good question, Nick. Um, essentially, the the course menu, since that's going away from original, um, all your content is 
is sort of displayed in one common area. So um, instead of seeing, instead of clicking on the left menu to go to assignments um, and it opening a new page, what they'll do is they will, like if you wanna put all your assignments in an assignments folder, you will have that folder. They will just scroll down to find that folder and open it. It's just not as deep. We you basically you can only go two levels down, so everything is more, as Megan said earlier, more sort of upfront and in everybody's faces, so it's easier for students to find things. Great, thank you, Mike. Yes, um, basically everything has been organized by category, so it's not that you don't have access to these features, um, but it's just not listed in this menu where you can click on links within links within links. So will they have difficulty jumping back and forth between modules? No, actually the idea here is that uh, the modules are easier to find and locate um, and everything should be able to be accomplished within one to two clicks. And I do see from Yvonne, so some of the features here that you like are small groups, discussions, e-reserves, and others, exactly, video introductions. So these are all features that you can use in Blackboard Ultra, um, but they might be a little bit different than how you've been using them. So I know I'm going to switch this off to Mike here in just a moment, but the analogy that one of my colleagues used, and I think it was just so appropriate, so I'm going to blatantly steal it is you might have this class that you that you love that you've really fine-tuned and kind of think of it like your box of crayons well now somebody says to go ahead and dump your crayons into a new box that would be your blackboard ultra but this box is a different size a different shape when you dump those crayons into it things might get a little jumbled. You might even drop a few of the crayons on the floor. They might not even make it into the box. So this is what we're telling people with the conversion is just to be aware that once you convert your course into the ultra version, you're probably going to have to do a little bit of tweaking and, and clean up because things won't come over necessarily the way you would expect. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. All right, I see that Yvonne is typing. Um, I can go ahead and respond to that, or Mike, if you want to take over. Thank you, Megan. Um, yeah, if uh, before we get started um, on the course conversion process, uh, I just wanna reiterate that you can always contact us here at Faculty Development at any point in this process. Um, if you would like to consult with us before you convert, feel free to call us and make an appointment um, or just call in and have a chat with us on the phone. Um, but we're really here to help you through this and make this as smooth as possible. Um, as mentioned, as uh, Megan mentioned earlier, uh, you folks, um, the fact that you're thinking about converting to ultra puts you ahead of the curve. So um, congratulations, you are on the cutting edge of Northern Illinois technology here at, that we're using for our students. Um, but again, please um, don't hesitate to contact us if you have any problems, questions, whatever. That's what we're here for. Um, so as you can see, I don't know if we have any Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fans out there, um, but I like this because one thing I wanna make sure that we, nobody does during this process is panic, okay? It's, everything is going to be fine. There are a few, um, features that are still being developed in um, Blackboard Ultra, and there are also some changes that um, may not be compatible with your current course, but there are workarounds, and um, we are here to help you find those. Um, we're here to help you um, if it takes, um, you know, and this may be that time to sort of uh, think about your course and sort of re-envision it, um, and, and just sort of revisit it and, you know, see if it needs updating. Um, this, you know, the conversion uh, to Ultra might be a, a good time to do that. Um, but it's really just, it's sort of, it's not really a straight line from um, original to Ultra. It's not as simple as just clicking the button and everything is happy. So please, um, as we said, you know, we have a lot of information available on our website, um, but if you have further questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Um, we have seen in some of these conversions um, when we when we do them, especially for uh, courses that have been around for a while that are maybe heavily nested, um, 
when you convert, sometimes you will see a lot of conversion exceptions. And um, it's, you know, those are, it's important to make sure that you um, look into those, but keep in mind that some of the exceptions are not really a big deal, especially the low priority ones, um, because those tend to deal with things like appearance and formatting changes or slight feature limitations. Um, an example of a low priority uh, conversion exception is if you have any empty discussion forums in your original course, when you convert to Ultra, it's just gonna remove those empty forums. Uh, not a big deal, it's really not gonna affect the functionality of your course, but it will throw a conversion error, uh, exception error, so you know they're gonna just count up. Um, the medium priority features, or the I should say the medium priority exceptions, um, might be uh, something you wanna look into a little more fully, but Again, generally, they're, they're not things that affect um, the function of your course a whole lot. Uh, an example of this would be uh, like currently in Ultra, rubrics are supported, but they're only supported as percentage rubrics. So, for example, if you have a uh, points-based rubric in your original course, when you go to convert, it's going to convert that to a percentage. Uh, this um, is, you know, it, it does change it a little bit, but again, if, if you really want a points-based rubric, um, there is a, a workaround for that in Ultra, or, you know, if, if you want to keep your rubrics the way you are, maybe you'll wait until um, Ultra is updated to, su to support those points-based rubrics. Um, but when it comes to the exceptions, you really want to pay attention to the high-priority ones, because those are... Um, unsupported features, things that are going to be completely different or not even work in the ultra view. Um, an example of this would be uh, wikis or blogs. Um, those are not currently supported. So if uh, your course relies heavily on those things, that would be an example of something that would you know, be a deal breaker for you. But uh, a nice thing uh, is on our website that is ultra right for me tab um, is uh, gives you a nice little uh, comparison and shows um, some of the conversion exceptions that may be deal breakers for you and gives you an idea of that. Um, but you know, just make sure that you're thoughtful about this process because we we don't um, we would hate for you to get in a position um, where you feel like um, you are not. Um, prepared or you're not, you know, giving students the sort of uh, attention they need. I, I guess I'm not articulating well here, but we just want to make sure it's smooth so that you and the students like the ultra experience. Okay, when you uh, decide to convert, um, what you can do is when you open your um, original course view, um, if you may see this uh, conversion pop-up window that I'm showing on the left. Um, you can dismiss it by saying, I'll keep the original course view for now, or you know, decide to try the ultra course view. Um, if you have already dismissed that um, pop-up window, then um, you may need to look up at the top, up in the top right um, for the pencil icon that I'm showing here. Um, one thing to note is that pencil icon will only show up if your course is unavailable to students. Um, so you'll need to make sure, look at that little padlock there, uh, make sure that that is, <clears throat> excuse me, make sure that that is red and looks locked. Um, Take a quick, um, I'm gonna share, show you how that process works here real quick. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. My bad. Oops. By same one, that's not good. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna give up. There you go. Okay. Okay, so if you can notice up here um, on the top right, you'll see that there's no pencil icon here. That is because my padlock is open. If I click on here to make it unavailable, you'll see this pencil icon up here. Um, if you click on this, it will then bring up the pop-up window and you can try the ultra course view um, from here. So, all right, I'm gonna move back to the... Oops. Just a moment, guys. I'm going to pull up the the report. I'm not, it's not showing up for me. Here, I got it. All right, sorry about the delay, folks. All right, cool. There we go. Okay, so um, now when you go to convert, um, it's going to take some time. So uh, generally, how long the Conversion time is usually around 30 to 45 minutes. <clears throat> However, um, it is very dependent on course size and large courses, courses with um, lots of, say, video content, large files, things like that may take longer. Um, so just be patient. What happens is it gets queued. You'll get an email uh, when your course converts. Um, Sometimes if, if your course is smaller or there's not a lot going on, sometimes they can convert uh, fairly quickly. Um, but once your course is converted, you want to make sure that you will, um, while you're in the preview version of your course, looking around, uh, it's imperative that you do not make the course available to students at that time. Because if you do that while you are in preview mode, that will make the ultra course conversion permanent. Um, and while that may be okay, um, it may also not be okay. So just be very careful about that. Um, um, if you do accidentally uh, turn it to ultra and you want to switch it back, make sure you get in contact with us immediately because that is a, kind of an involved process. Uh, and we want to make sure that we can get to it right away. Um, but just be patient during the conversion time because uh, it does take a bit. Mike, if you don't mind, I just wanted to jump in here. Uh, Nick had a really great question, and he wants to know, will instructors be able to copy tests from the original course view into the ultra view? Um, so basically, he wants to know, can he do it piece by piece, or does he need to convert you know, the entire course to Ooh. ultra? Excellent question. Um, I will be covering that in just a minute, but um, so if you could be patient, I will get there in just a second. Um, so uh, once you've uh, gone through and looked at uh, your course, and if you decide, um, if you're starting to think about committing, you wanna make sure that you are very careful and you rev review all of your conversion exceptions. Um, you'll also wanna go in your course and you're gonna to wanna to check to ensure that all the material is converted properly. Sometimes um, there can be little hiccups. Uh, things may not uh, be displaying as you expected them. If you had um, folders that went down more than that second level of nesting, that's gonna flatten things out. So you may need to um, create new folders or rearrange some of your materials to sort of get it displaying the way you want it. Um, so make sure you throw there. Also make sure that you click on your links, um, 
check your videos to make sure they're playing, things like that. <clears throat> but, um, and just be very deliberate. Um, and then finally, um, it's, it's an excellent idea to enter the student preview um, before you commit to the conversion because that the student preview gives you a great idea of what um, the student is going to be seeing. So it, it's helpful because that can really um, bring things to the surface like if an assignment is not visible, um, you know, when you enter student preview, you're going to see that right away. Um, if say, um, you know, you're unable to access uh, an, an assignment or an assessment, you know, when you enter the student preview and try to access that assessment, you know, and you can't do it, you're going to find that out right away. So, you know, it's, it's an excellent idea to enter the student preview um, and look around before you, you fully commit to the conversion. All right. Um, now, before we talk about the suggested workflow, I want to address Nick's question. Um, so essentially, Nick, um, what you can do is, uh, what am I? You can, um, when you convert your course to Ultra, it the copy process now is different. So in, um, in original view, if you wanted to copy um, assessments from a course, you had to copy everything from that course in, into your new course, right? All assessments and then get rid of anything you didn't want. What's uh, a, a new feature with Ultra is that now um, when you go to copy things, you can copy uh, parts of things. Like you can copy specific content, not entire content areas. So for example, um, you could, if you had an Ultra course that you were copying from, you could go into that course and pick a specific piece of content and bring it into your new Ultra shell. Is that helpful? Or your new Ultra course, I should say, I'm sorry. Yes, you should be able to, um, I think, I, I because I, I would have to look to make sure, but I believe um, you can bring in those rubrics, yes. Okay, yeah, good. And again, um, you know, if you wanna talk about, um, get into some of the specifics, please, um, you know, email us. We'd be happy to set up a time to uh, sit down and discuss this in greater detail. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna move on to some of these suggested workflows. Um, we have we've created a couple of different um, workflows for the ultra conversion. And um, the reason for this is not to create more work for you, which it is a little bit more work for you. Um, but this is just to ensure that if something does happen, if you are not happy with your ultra, conversion, then um, you haven't uh, made any permanent changes. Um, if you, if, if you um, do as we're going to suggest, which is to create a new shell and then design your, you know, convert your ultra course and design it in that new shell uh, and clean it up, et cetera. Um, if you decide you don't like it or if um, you make some mistakes, that's not going to affect the students. It's a lot easier to correct at that time. If you go ahead, request your course, and convert that to Ultra, and then decide somewhere down the line that, you know, I don't like this, I want to move back to original, that can be done, but it, it's a fairly complicated process. And it's essentially like putting your course through a time machine um, and rolling it back to a previous version so that any work you've done in that course or any work the students have done, more importantly, anything they've submitted, any grades they've given out, um, those are all going to go away. So this is really why we're recommending some of these workflows, just sort of as a safety net. Um, but for both of these workflows, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a shell. Um, and when, to create that new shell, um, on the base navigation page, you'll hit the tool tab 
and you'll click on Blackboard Faculty Tools. Um, and then you will um, see a thing. You'll see um, request a course or request a shell. Requesting a shell is exactly like requesting a course. Um, the difference being that the shell shows up pretty much immediately um, and then is yours for um, ever, essentially, until you delete it. Um, shells are meant for development purposes only, so they um, you can open them, but they tend they will close up every night. Um, so if if like you're opening your course and you notice it keeps your shell course and you notice it keeps going back to private, that's what's going on. Um, but once you've created this new shell, then um, what we're going to do then is um, we're going to copy your original course into that new shell, and then we'll convert that shell to Ultra. So uh, once you've converted that shell to the Ultra course view, um, so you've got your, your previously copied original course that you're converting. Um, and once you've, you've done that, then there are a couple of different options. OK. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the first option is to clean up and reorganize your course inside this shell. Um, this um, is, you know, this may be ideal for you if you can, um, if you say have your courses not super heavily nested, maybe it, it um, when it comes in, it doesn't change a lot of formatting. Uh, you know, if, if you can find what you need, if it looks pretty good and you feel comfortable with starting to move stuff around inside the new ultra shell you've created, you know, go for it. Um, when you've uh, reorganized your shell and you decide this is complete, then this is the time you're going to want to then request your course, um, which again will start in original view, um, and then convert your newly requested course to the ultra view, and then you'll copy from the shell into the course. So I know that adds an extra step basically, or extra few steps, but this is a good way to um, you know, just ensure that you are comfortable with your ultra course before converting, or I should say before fully committing to the conversion. Okay, the section, second option then is to create um, a second ultra, sh a second shell and convert it to ultra after you've converted your uh, copied course. Um, and then what you can do is build your course by copying content from the converted shell into your second shell you created. I know that sounds a little crazy, um, but as we mentioned earlier, it is possible in Ultra to copy specific pieces of content. Um, and that is, is really nice when you're building a course because you can pull um, content from then sp different uh, courses, if you would like, um, and pull them directly into this course. Um, so, uh, an example of when this might be a good option is when you have, say, a heavily nested course and it's flattened everything out. The formatting is very confusing and trying to reorganize it um, just, you know, is is uh, very, you know, very difficult. So what you can do then is create this second shell and just start pulling pieces of content from your uh, converted shell into this new shell. Uh, when you've then got your shell complete and designed the way you want it and you're happy, again, you do the same thing. You request your course, you convert the course to Ultra, and you copy the shell into the course. Um, we can, we will, um, in our uh, follow-up email uh, after this, we, we will go ahead and send these two uh, workflow options as an attachment, just so you have it. Um, we will also attach um, our course conversion quick guide um, for you folks to use just as a just as a quick reference. Um, but that is also available on our website if um, you are interested in finding it sooner. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to stop just for a second to see if we have any other questions that I missed. It looks like I missed something in the chat while I was talking. You know, one of the questions that popped up is, when is the original uh, Blackboard going away? So this is something that 
a lot of people have been asking and, and we're not trying to be evasive. Truly Blackboard is doing this very, very gradually. They have not given us a date on when the original view will go away. I think they are very, very tuned into the fact that they have instructors who have years of work invested in the original view. So they're not taking this decision lightly and they're, they'll make a big announcement before it ever goes away, I guess is what I'm getting at. Um, certainly not this year, um, but in the future, will this eventually go away? Maybe, um, but I, I don't think you need to be panicked that this is going to happen um, in the near future. Thank you, Megan. Um, and I'd also like to um, revisit the the uh, two levels of nesting because that that is a a, a pretty big change, um, and. As, as we mentioned earlier, you have two choices now. You can either start with a learning module and put a folder inside that, or you can start with a folder and put another folder inside of that, and that's as deep as you can go. Um, the, you, might, you might be wondering why you don't have the learning module or the folder differentiation at all. Um, that comes into play when you go to um, copy materials into your new course and um, there's in in the ultra course view, uh, the, a course module is considered to be a self-contained sort of complete learning unit, I guess um, is a way to describe it. And so if you want to um, copy a module, it, it doesn't allow you to then go into that module and pick certain pieces out of it. It, it, it wants you to copy that entire module. Um, unlike a folder where you can um, open the folder and pick a specific piece of content inside that folder and copy it out of there. So if you are um, converting and you want to pull a specific piece of content from a module, um, what you would want to do then is probably pull that content out of the module, put it in a folder, and then you could pick that specific piece of content out. All right, we are uh, getting close to the end, so we wanted to make sure we left time for questions. Um, does anybody have any questions now about the conversion process? All right, I don't see a whole lot of typing, so I hope that means that you are um, feeling a little more comfortable uh, we understand that this this can be a very daunting process so uh, i just want to reiterate that we are here to help you um, if you have any questions about this at all give us a call stop in our office um, you know set up an appointment to sit down with one of us um, we are more than happy to sit down with you and talk about the specifics involved with converting your courses to the ultra course view. Um, don't feel like you have to rush into this. This is not, um, you know, as Megan mentioned earlier, there is no timeline established as yet to when we are going to make the full on conversion to ultra. So um, there are a lot of factors involved. Um, the it may be a discussion that you're having uh, at the department level. You know, you may, as a department, may decide that you all want to switch to Ultra at a, at a certain time. You may not. Um, but it's up to you. Uh, what's, you know, the most important thing is that our students get the best um, quality course that you are able to give them. And if that means staying in original, that means staying in original for now. That's not a problem. Um, there is a, a question from Nick, and he said, so if courses were built incrementally throughout the semester, then would be, would building an ultra be appropriate? So I didn't know if you wanted to address oh, that. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that actually, that's an excellent um, idea. Um, that is something that we've been discussing here as one of the options to building a course is that, yes, create an ultra uh, shell at the beginning of the semester, and then as you go through the semester, um, in your original course, just gradually build your build up your ultra course in that shell. Then when it comes to next semester, you can just copy the new course from the ultra shell. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. Thank you, Nick. 
Do we have any other questions? All right. Um, well, we do have this, uh, and feel free to bust in any time if you have questions, but um, we do have a, a, a survey that we would um, appreciate it if you would complete. Um, your feedback is important and it does help us to uh, modify these uh, workshop offerings and hopefully um, give you workshops that are timely and well thought out. Um, again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at faculty development. Um, you can either contact us by email or by phone. Um, and we are always here to help you. Um, so, and hopefully make this process smooth and easy. Looks like we do still have some more typing, so we'll hang out oh, for a little great. bit if anybody has some questions. Thank you again for attending, everyone.